Hey everybody, thanks again for listening to Filling in the Gaps. We have a very special episode today featuring uh, these guys right here. Bombarded is a musical D&D podcast adventure that features Dallas-Fort Worth band Lindby playing as an all-bard cast. Dungeon Maestro Kyle leads Yashi, Razul, son of Dazul, and Randy through their education at Strumlot's School for Bards and the misadventures that they encounter along the way. Everyone brings real instruments to the table to perform their bard spells, and each episode provides a new song composed by rolling chord dice. Check out BombardedCast.com for more info, or just search Bombarded wherever you get podcasts. Yep, that's it. It is Kyle, the DM of Bombarded. We are so excited. This episode ended up being so much fun. We hope you enjoy it. Um, Other than that, let's just get to the show. Here we are, filling in the gaps. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Filling in the Gaps. I am Rich from the heartland state of Ohio, joined by my good friend Cameron from the biggest and baddest state of Texas, along with a special guest who Cam's going to intro in a second. If you're new to Filling in the Gaps, we are not an actual play podcast. We are a podcast where we brainstorm ideas so that you can actually play. We know that DMing every single week can be tough. Sometimes you run out of material, and that's what we're here for. We're going to smash together a random theme and a random scenario it might be good it might be goofy it might be weird but hopefully it gives you some sort of idea to use next week or the weeks following um cam why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest for today absolutely ladies and gentlemen put your hands together if you are driving down the street i need you to stand up and applause applaud excuse me um anyways (laughs) hey everybody this is kyle from bombarded and uh welcome kyle how are you hey how's it going so happy good to, to have, have it, Kyle. Here. Good to have yeah. Kyle. Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce what is Bombarded for the listeners out there who don't uh, who haven't listened in yet? No, well, Bombarded is an actual play podcast that I do with uh, with my band, or it's not my band, but we're a band, and uh, I DM them through their adventure. They play all bards, and you know when they cast spells, they play their instruments. Whenever they, you know, once an episode, we roll dice that have chords on them, and that tells us what chords we can use in a song. And we write a song every episode, and uh, it gets a little wild, a little crazy. We get some really weird combinations between our drum machine and and our, uh, you know. <laughs> know chords and whatnot so it's so you know you'll hear a song you might like you might hear a song you don't like but regardless you get a song every episode and you get to hear the adventure of these bards through the land of beats art yeah it's, so all it's bards all bards out there who've brought a guitar to a D session rejoice mm-hmm. this is this is the <laughs> session for you this is the yep. podcast for you uh, which I is just it, awesome man. Uh, but Kyle, yeah, it's great to have you. Cam, are there any announcements uh, coming up for this week or anything new for the listeners to be? I have one announcement specifically. Okay. It's that you nailed that intro. Like, it was Thank really you. good. Yeah. I, yeah, I was practicing, you know, just 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 practicing the whole drive home. Wanted to make sure I got it right. I was late to recording today, so I didn't want to mess up because then Cam yells at me. And it's just, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Worth it. Worth if it. You, if, you, yeah. if you feel my pain and you want Cam to stop yelling at me, leave a five star on iTunes, please. <laughs> it's, the only way, it's the only way he stops. <laughs> you're, you're pandering. And if you actually continue, if you continue to want me to berate our, my co-host here, uh, leave a one star review and tell me how great I am. Uh, as well. You can also do that. I do not care um but can other we get than that, 500 guys, five stars to help to help a poor boy please please no, jesus will help Christ. jesus will help if we get 500 i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding i just wanted to i wanted to do that you know um no i, I don't have any announcements i do have one question though for both of you mm-hmm. oh okay shoot shall we roll uh let's do it i have been yeah. waiting all week for this roll right here i love guest episodes i mean cam i love you you're one of a kind but sometimes it's good to get something fresh, you know? You know, to spice up the relationship, to get some new dice in the ring, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So let's go yeah. ahead. Yeah, let's roll. You're, you're have... essentially saying a three-way is <laughs> no, spicing no, up our podcasting. No. I like this. No, I'm no, excited. no. No, not, no, that's not what I meant. Um, but, okay, so for those of you who are new, today I'm going to be rolling for our list of scenarios. Cam will be rolling for our list of themes. And then we're, we're actually going to have Kyle roll 1d20 for both lists. Um, so we're going to figure 
out over the next few minutes what the rest of our brainstorming session will be about. Uh, so you guys ready to roll? Let's yep. do this thing. All right, we let's do it. Nice. All right, I got a 12 for our scenarios. I got a 10. Okay. And Kyle, what'd you get? Okay, just to make sure I know, uh, I'm rolling for both theme and scenario right now? Yes, yep. yes. Okay, under CNR. So uh, I'd say I got a 14 for themes and okay. uh, six for scenarios. All right, nice. well, why don't you guys go ahead, look at those numbers, and Kyle, while you kind of think through what you want to pick, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let our listeners know what these roles are are brought to us by. So if you guys haven't heard yet, Libris Arcana Dice, uh, they are our faithful sponsor. They've been with us for a while and we absolutely love them. Uh, what they provide is a monthly dice service. So you go ahead and just like you would register for Netflix or for Hulu, if you like D&D dice and you like getting random sets, well, you sign up on Libris Arcana Dice and every month they will send you one random set of dice or every three months, They'll send you three sets of dice. And if you hop on and use our promo code FITG, they will go ahead and give you 25% off your first order. Check them out. They're awesome. We love those guys. Um, and they just send out good dice. Uh, but Kyle, looking at our list of things, mm -hmm. uh, what do you kind of think looks like a good uh, good brainstorming mix? Uh, remind me again of the okay. roles that y'all got. Sorry. I got you. Oh, no worries. You. So for our themes, we have a selection between uh, my roll of 10, uh, it was a pirate port town brought to us by the listener, Joel. Thanks again, okay. Joel. Um, and then Poison Fields is yours. You, yours was a 14, right. correct? Yep. Yes, there was. And that was also brought to us by Joel. So that's one of our themes. And then um, our scenarios is, uh, let's see here, number 12. Yes, Stopping an Execution, brought to us by Ren13. Thanks, Ren. And then six for your role, a divine or demon possessing a PC a PC, excuse me, brought to us by LeGravy. Thanks, Adam. Sweet, um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's the two that you have to pick from for scenarios and the two for uh, themes. So what are you thinking? Okay, uh, let's go with, uh, I, I really like the idea of Pirate Port Town. Okay. Okay. That seems like a, like a hopping place. So uh, let's do that and also do the, hmm, 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 hmm. I know, that's Stopping the choice. Stopping an execution. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I feel like there's a lot to work with between those two. What when you think of these two things, either a pirate port town or stopping an execution, what are the first things that pop into your mind? What are you seeing in your mind right now? Hmm. Like I'm definitely seeing a lot of uh, gallows for sure. I think that there's something. Yeah. I just it's, it's, see like pirates going like I didn't deserve to be here or something like that, and just like screaming mm -hmm. out at, at the PCs. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, we've got those like hanging that's... cages too. Gotta have that. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm seeing like mm -hmm. tree houses like moving its way further into the island that peak above the actual canopy of the jungle. Uh, mm. Kind of seeing that. And that. eventually like it starts off like ground -like, And as the pirates get more successful, that's when you get into the higher tier, like, you know, treetop settling. It's kind of like, you know, the pirates have their own little uh, oh. class system in a way. So it's like a, it's almost like a bungalow type thing. There's yeah. like the shanty town on the shore, and mm -hmm. then as you progress further in, you get like some raised up bungalows, and then some night. I like that. I think that sounds sweet. Yeah. So, so last week we created a a, a sea themed episode as well. So we are double pirating right now, which just makes me excited. Sweet. I'm a big fan Dude, of pirates. You can't have enough pirates. Yeah. I don't uh, think I mean... you truly could. Um, but this one's going to give us a chance to – last week was more about encounters and more about dealing with things on the sea itself, whereas mm -hmm. this one's going to be dealing with the pirate uh, town itself. So why don't we start with the world building of the pirate town and okay. mm -hmm. sort of like, like expanding on y'all's ideas about um, the the bungalow system and all the, you know, the different – I love the treehouse aspects first and foremost. I think that's a really great idea. Uh, Thanks. I also could picture – um, like a pirate ship that got stuck in a tree that oh, is yeah. acting as like yes, a, as a as like a main house or something like that. Um, but w what would y'all do if you're if you're sort of approaching this world? Where are you starting it? Uh, how are we starting to build this out? Hmm. Um, well, I gotta. Th I always yeah, try to think of some. I try to think of some NPCs that seem really cool, and then building a few like things or organizations or encounters around them. Which brings up to me, I think, uh, a first question when it comes to NPCs. Who are we saving for being executed at a pirate town? Yeah, so usually, if it was a normal town, we'd be saving a pirate. But who are we saving 
at this, uh, who are we trying to save from a pirate execution? What do you think, Kyle? Uh, I, I would say, you know, probably a bard out there talking trash on some pirate, and oh, the pirate dude. is, you know, a, a, the pirate is gone. Like, say you could, it's a meritocracy, and they could mm -hmm. actually go to somebody higher up and be like, hey, I want to purchase this person's, like, death warrant. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody's done that, and maybe maybe this allows for a little bit more of kind of a negotiation and role playing aspect to get through this. And you got to find that person who. Uh, sorry, I'm really jumping ahead here, but no, no, dude, no, no, no. Um, that's, this is that's what, this, what we do. <laughs> this is 100. percent The first what we do. 15 minutes Sweet. is all just spitballing. Yeah. Well, yeah, they would have to, you know, the 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 players would actually have to find this one person who purchased that writ and you know, find a way to be able to like, ah, well, how about you don't kill this bard? <laughs> Figure it out from there. But I think yeah. a bard talking, talking crap on a, on a pirate would be a good, a, a, a fun, a fun way to go about it. Dude. I love this idea, especially the idea yeah. of somebody purchasing like a death warrant essentially. Cause what if it's that there's not even just one, let's be honest. If there's one person who hates a bard, there's more than one person who hates a bard. Yep. If they're, they're expert trash talkers. So maybe mm -hmm. your party, maybe the rule is on the day of the execution, um, like maybe you need so many people to show up. Maybe there's like a vote of all the people who have this death, death warrant. They show up and they decide on that day whether or not they are going to follow through with this like hanging or not. So maybe this bard has, I don't know, four or five, six different pirates who said like, yeah, let's let's get this guy up on the gallows and then, you know, give him justice and your players have to go around and either persuade them to vote, nah, let them live, or have to make sure that those pirates don't show up to that, uh, like, a, like it's like a throne vote if they don't show up. Yeah, no, that's ominous. Make sure so, they don't show up. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking <laughs> reverse. I was definitely thinking in reverse because um, I was thinking that the bard was going and buying up the death warrants of the pirates themselves. And Ooh. when they show back up in a town, he was having them hang. Uh, having them hung essentially and the way the reason i was thinking that i guess is because i got this like old red coat uh image in my stuck in my head mm -hmm. of like this okay. old like british wear man wearing a uh like a, a white wig or something like that but i actually disagree with myself now and i think that that <laughs> <laughs> i think that that idea that you just said right there of the pirates all coming together um which is unlike them but that's how much the hatred is for mm -hmm. this bard yeah, I think uh, now could this bard be a this bard could be cool because it reminds me of uh, Dandelion from the Witcher series, and I don't I don't yeah. know if y'all really played the Witcher. Before. I haven't, unfortunately. Yeah, the Dandelion is this like really eccentric bard that always seems to find himself in trouble because of his loud mouth, and you know, uh, like yes. every bard, <laughs> That's yeah, perfect. <laughs> and so I I think that I think that if you were to treat this bard as as a as a good person. That's just putting themselves in bad situations consistently mm -hmm. um, and finding a way to provide value to your party through that person. It'll increase their desire to help him overall. Well, let me ask let me ask you guys this question then. OK, let's try to think of several reasons why a pirate would hate a bard on, on that reason. What has this bard done to these pirates that make them want to kill him? That's a really good question. I'm thinking for sure there's a lady involved oh, or a yeah. man involved. Like there's there's a significant other yeah. who this bard has has like slept with or hit on, and now this pirate wants revenge. Well, this assumes that all pirates are men. I mean, what if there's a woman pirate that had her heart broken by this bard, who's Ooh, saying that's perfect he, too. who's saying her sea shanties all oh throughout the night gosh. until she left one single night, dude? And then <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds yeah. so good. Yeah. So okay, so we've got love. Just I'm just gonna put love, however that fits in. I love the idea of a female pirate though being scorned, um, or yeah. even if this is a female bard of a male yeah. pirate being, or just something yeah. where it's like, hey, like we, you led me on, we had love, you scorned me, you burnt me, and that's probably gonna be someone really difficult to persuade to not kill yeah. this person. 100%. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, and you can go any direction with that, which is awesome. So, um, I think thievery is kind of a good route to go but oh, the yeah. reason why i disagree with it is because well i don't know it depends on the bard right mm -hmm. because if this bard is a good guy uh, that doesn't want to steal I, I don't know it's it's hard to say but i think that theory maybe like an, a specific item or maybe the the oh actually 
Um, there was. I mean, these are pirates bunch... too. So stealing yeah. from a pirate, that's not going to hey. raise a bunch of eyebrows. Well, it's like a double negative, right? So, yeah, what exactly. if the bard what if the bard has been traveling around with the pirates and has like, you know, taken account of their exploits and whatnot and has been going around and telling tales of these pirates going out and they're like, dude, you're blowing up my spot. Stop it. You're gonna get <laughs> yeah. me in trouble. Oh, you know, people are gonna want to gotcha. come after me because I've amassed so much treasure and you're telling everyone about it. Yeah. I like that. So kinda yeah. like a an unintentional put in the spotlight. Like we want to yeah. shut him up. Exactly. Like, Let me tell you the tale of old Mary Merryweather, and yeah. then he tells like all all the treasure he stole, and all these pirates are like, "Can you tell me again exactly where he stole that treasure from?" and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's what a literal this? situation it... of loose lip sync ships. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I like that. A... Yep, I've never loose heard lip. that before. Yeah, Man, I'm lip. stupid. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm really dumb. Um, here, I got another one. The uh, the bard is stupid as hell, and uh, yeah, that's just and then they hate that. Um, no, uh, what yeah. about this though? Just a fool bard. Yeah, and then he just looks exactly like me. It's weird. I don't know or, why. What, uh, well, a fool bard. What about a bard that just comes up with like random treasures and tales and like they're all lies, and everybody is going off to try to find these things this bard's talking about, and nobody's dude. finding anything. And they're yeah, just like, dude, just... screw this guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. What about this as well? One of the places that they find some treasure or something like that, there's a golden fiddle that was found on inside of one of the things. And uh, on the ship, they can always hear the music. And essentially, like, the bard is playing this fiddle. And the, the, the she shanties sound so much better than they ever have before. And it seems like everybody's in a much higher spirit. Then the bard leaves. And so then it's like this indentured servitude situation where this pirate just wants him to come back. And he's like, my ship was never as good until you after you left. And right. okay, I like Like that. Like if I can't have you, no one can type thing. Yeah, Um, pretty much. Yeah. I also like the idea too. Awesome. I know. Because I'm trying to pick. I'm trying to think of different pirates for these. I think another one could be. um, I mean, I think this is just a funny one, too. You have this pirate who used to be this more respectable feared pirate but this bar just started circulating tales like maybe that maybe there's just something like his name's willie so it's just all of the songs where it's like you use all these different euphemisms like euphemisms for willie and now this pirate's a laughing stock and he's like yeah. you know you've ruined my name i can't go anywhere i used to people used to shake in their boots and now they like roll on the floor laughing <laughs> I love so that. we have we have five pirates here we have love Rumors, lie, shame, and jealousy, essentially, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or envy, if you will. Um, but I, I think that would be that's a, like a good amount of pirates that would be pissed enough to go, yeah, we all want his death warrant, and they all want to kill. By the way, guys, this is this is awesome. I would, yeah. I'm no. already like on a high right now on this one and from a story. I, I, I want to throw it back uh, to to your idea about like you know the bard trying to get death writs. I feel like I feel like there's something there just to just to throw you know throw it on the grill a little bit. Uh, what if it's you know an unknown bard that has been hired by pirates and each time they just wind up leaving him on a deserted mm-hmm. island because they're like ah oh, yeah I don't want to pay you for your services so we'll just abandon you here. And they finally found their way back, and they got like a like an Arya Stark kind of list going on. Yeah, ooh, like a hit list kind of thing. Exactly. So it's almost like you're then trying. So in either encounter, we're trying to go around to these other pirates. Maybe there even is just this pirate council, mm-hmm. and you're trying to convince them on this day of justice to call out these different names for these people to be brought to the gallows, and then either yayed or nayed, whether they hang or not. Right. Dude, I like that idea too, because even like that gives you the ability to kind of flush out more this bard. And maybe this bard is mm-hmm. an NPC that you're aware of. Maybe it's it's someone that you just met on the way to this pirate town, or maybe it's someone who just says, "Hey, if we take out these pirates, who you know I want revenge on, I can tell you where their treasure stuff is at." Yes, and all yeah. the best villains, all the best villains ever, have always kind of sort of been right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and he's not wrong for wanting to kill these guys that essentially left him to his own death. You know? well, and that's the thing, too, that I love about a pirate town is, like, so many times I think players kind of... I think the reason why murder hoboishness starts is because we play game Like, in the real world, we follow society's rules. It's going to get real philosophical. So sometimes you put people into a game where they want to be more fantastical, and you say... Oh, hey! Also, you have to t- you have to follow this town's rules, and people buck against that. 
But in a pirate town, there aren't any rules. Yeah. You do whatever. You can say whatever you want. You could shoot somebody, and, you know, the only day that justice is served is on Monday. So until then, like, if no one reports that this guy was killed or no one really cares, eh, whatever. You're fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah. if, you, if you convince enough people to care they'll be like all right the pirate council says that we need you know willie we need limp willie to come on up here and, <laughs> and oh, serve poor, justice for his crimes oh uh, limp <laughs> willie and his his sales never went high <laughs> oh dude there's a song there for sure oh, he's always at half mast boys <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this I love. I I already love Wimp, Limp Willie, and I Limp Willie is like the greatest character. Never of all even time. Heard him. Yeah. Um, oh man! But okay, That's so I so think good. we got like like Cam said, um, and like Kyle said, we've got these 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 people who we need to, for one reason or another, um, either frame or convince. But we've got the ideas. What are kind of those characters looking like to you when you think of those different things we mentioned? Like, do we like the idea of this of this one love captain being being female or this female very almost like Aphrodite emotional, like very beautiful, but also very temperamental um, Mm -hmm. type of a captain. Uh, You know, it's, it's, we speak what we know. Right. And so like, as a heterosexual male, it's easy for me to go like, yeah, of course the the woman is the one who's scorned, but we could definitely go with like a guy that's scorned as well, or a girl that's scorned by another girl bard. Or it's, I mean, it's, it could be anything, honestly, I don't really care, but um, yeah, I think that, I think the idea of like this, I like the idea of this woman who's just like a badass. I am telling oh, yeah. you, straight up has like an eye patch, big scar across the face where the eye patch like sort of lies in, um, and just just a piercing stare, kind of mm-hmm. like that NPC that you tried to kill us with in our game, Rich. Um, the uh, hey Kyle, Rich yeah. is Rich. Rich ran a level nine monster, uh, or not a monster, but a level nine NPC. Directly at uh, two level ones, and Look, guess who won? I gave what? you, I gave you ways to. Okay, first off, they were being arrested. Okay, I, right. And I, yeah. But they, I gave her one of those orbs where it's like all the chains linked together, uh-huh. um, and like yeah, you throw yeah, it and say, yeah, exactly. So she had that, and they were in a little bit of a scuffle, and it fell off of her belt, and it was kind of just a race to see who could get to it first, and they happened to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, then so I had him, a no. yeah. I had a level nine NPC captive, and uh, I gotta tell you. But anyways, a, a person that's like that though, Rich, like she's this she's this champion that sort of like not put up with anything and just sort of forced her way through. Uh, all it just you know everybody respects her because they're they're fearful of her because she's just so powerful and she's so so strong. And I also like the idea since we're doing a musical episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I had this idea a while back. Can um, can we not have wind in this world? And instead of wind, the the music that is played by each of the captains of the ship is is what drives the ships forwards. Is that hmm. is that yeah. a bad idea? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Dude. And, and I because I the reason why I say that is because then it plays really into this bard um, being a part of like this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And also, it gives our our ships a lot of really cool uh, components, like a uh, just this this captain shredding on a guitar, just like yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, like the... it's like a mixture of like Zelda the Wind Waker and Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so good. Yes, yes that's really what good. I'm... But like, yeah, I love the idea of like these different ships also maybe like coming together. And as because if you have like a pirate, like a ship fight or something, it's almost like as much as it is a battle of like cannons, it's also like a battle of like these bards dueling it out with their music, which I think could be sick. Yeah. Every oh, yeah. every boat battle has its own sick like soundtrack to it. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, and and they don't call them boat battles; they call them concerts. And so it's yep. just like every, and so there's just people sitting in like skiffs, just going like, "Oh man, I love this when these two bands come together." <laughs> <laughs> I knew yeah. about this band way before anybody else did, honestly. So, so, so wait, are are they doing this as entertainment? And it's not necessarily like feuding people, or like people are like, "Oh yeah, I actually don't like these people." It's like, "Oh no, we put on shows. This is this is all part of the show." I don't know. I almost feel like it's WWE where there's like partially hatred and then also like uh, some staged behind it. I but like I think, that. 
I like a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. if you want to incorporate, we're getting way off of this pirate port town right now. Yeah, we I'm really loving, did. <laughs> no, it's okay. I love this idea. So I think you have like the very red coat military, and their music is all. It's like maybe it's classical, maybe it's not, yeah. but it's just very. Yeah. Uh, it's very simple music. It's very just easy to follow, rhythmic. Uh, it's just kind of pushing forward. And it's not too fantastical. But the pirates, they almost more enjoy enjoy being able to play these different tunes. And because of that, they can have their boats do different things um, yeah. because of the way, like, the music they play. Yeah, I like and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it back to the topic at hand by saying if we're going with this WWE route with these uh, concerts, then perhaps perhaps our uh, our, our captain – had their bard that was like, you know, that helped maneuver their ship and everything and played for them. And then an erupt, something erupted in their relationship. And that bard left to like an opposing team. Like, Ooh. no, we're done. And started playing for a different, for a different captain. And that's where this kind of contingency came up. And unfortunately that bled over into real life. It didn't stay in the, uh, the quote unquote WWE style concerts mm-hmm. that are being put on. Yeah. Dude, and this I- bard's name was Bret Hart. Um, <laughs> dude, Brett Harp. Can you, can you imagine yeah, Harp. Too, like if this pirate poor town like Kyle was saying earlier is at like the top of this little island mountain like all of these people like once a week or whenever they're having this like kind of bout they all like meet up on the top of the mountain and there's just this amphitheater on the top of the mountain that looks out over the ocean when oh, it's yes. like just and it's just now becoming dusk and there's these two ships each putting on their own type of music and there's lights going off as well and all these explosions that I, that sounds sick to me yeah Dude, i would go that there sounds really cool i'm seeing it like right now in my head oh, and that yeah. would be so it's, awesome it's like to watch powering through my head right now i'm just like oh i can i just play right now this right is amazing um it's like let's okay. play this game right now <laughs> you know what guys <laughs> welcome to filling in the gaps uh we're just gonna start playing D. hope you don't mind this is a six hour episode <laughs> son um <laughs> so okay so let's let's i think that what we should do is the love is our key reason as to why um, this bard is now scorning this lady, and and then now she is collecting the other pirates and going, well, yeah, I he did this, this, and this, and so all of them come together in a, in a team of sorts, a stable, and then mm-hmm. um, and then him by himself is a part of this new up and coming ship that's going around playing this music that's never been heard before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What if the bard is scorned, but also like doesn't have any friends because of this, like because of him being scorned, it's almost mm-hmm. like a very like personal thing, like for a crew to lose its bard. That's not just like a, we, you know, it's not just something that we rotate through and find another one. But if, what if um, he needs to find a crew of people who will help him during this bard fight ship battle and maybe your uh, maybe your players are a part of that. Ooh, I like this. A lot. So you kind of get to also choose the type of music that your bard's going to be playing during this fight, and kind of create. You almost essentially get to create very WWE style, like the persona of your boat and what it's going to do, and what like. Oh man. Yeah. So it, yeah. I don't know. You could just start off with skiffs that. in the amateur circuit and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, this is too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> we like we like listen to Bombarded three weeks from now, and he's all okay, guys. Pirate adventure. They're like, wait, but we're in a school. He's all screw that. We're going on a pirate. Yeah, <laughs> field trip. Buckle up. <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay, I, I actually love that idea because then it gives our our hook for our players um, in a more direct way. Mm-hmm. Because it makes them go, okay, yeah, I guess I'll, I guess I'll go help this guy out, and then it has this like level situation where you're sort of working your way up to the man of war ship. That's like this amazing ship, the one that he had came from originally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Punch Out, you know, from like Super Nintendo and stuff like that. Yeah, where you yeah. like start with like the weak ship, and it's like they're like playing like bluegrass, and like bang 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 ding ding ding, ding, ding. and then <laughs> and they just get shredded by your music or something like that, but. I think as a, as you grow on that that's a that's a really cool idea. But again, we're still not at the town yet. We need to probably go fill fill up this town a little bit. Yeah. Well, now that we probably. know this town is WWE, I think uh, I think that changes a lot. Pirate towns are already very flamboyant, but you add mm-hmm. right. WWE to the mix and whew. All right, so <laughs> so pirate pi- wrestling. Yeah. So there's okay. a Google yeah. search for your listeners. <laughs> 
Don't Google that. Kids, no. Yeah, I, I, I literally, <laughs> actually, you know what? I'm, here we go. Uh-oh, oh, uh-oh, the Google's happening. So, okay, why he Googles that and uh, gets to enjoy those mental pictures. Let's, uh, let's you know, look down on this town from like 5,000 feet. What buildings are you guys seeing? What, what, what type of zones or areas or specific, like, things are you seeing that makes, that gives this town some personality? Um, a pirate shanty school would be one that comes to mind. Like a school of rock type thing? Yeah, but a school of shanty. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, Uh-oh. man. Oh, that's not as bad Let as Let me that. tell you something. No, it's, it's not as not. I would not have put it up if it was like terrible, but. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, they're all pretty. Brother. They're all pretty innocent as far as the images go. Oh, yeah. There's a whole new meaning <laughs> drop anchor. Um, um, so I like the idea yeah. of this. What, what's it called? Um, oh man, what what is it called? Where there's kind of like a is it an alcove where it's like a, a mm-hmm. circular ring on the inside oh, of an island or like a bay? Like a bay. Yes, I think this thing has to be built around a bay. Yeah, it's maybe definitely. even big enough for these boats to. Maybe they don't even necessarily like fight like shooting cans at each other. Mm-hmm. It's more of like a boarding process, and they just kind of both park in the bay uh, and have these little rock off battles. Yeah, yeah. I like but that. I also like them being off on the horizon, battling and shooting cans at each other too. Well, I think you could have both, right? Because like you know, just as much as they're fighting on the stage, maybe they're out in the sea actually doing stuff as well. Yeah. What what if what if the uh, this area of the island had like a few different bays that all like fed up to our like you know our higher end above the canopy and whatnot and so you had like three oh. different small bays near each other and that kind of tiered off you know the different levels of showmanship. Dude, I like, I like that. that. So you have to be you have to like rank up to go from one bay to another bay to another yeah. bay. Dude, okay. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the first bay. Let's start with the rookie tier. Um, we'll start okay. with the college league. What do you guys, what makes up that part of town or that part of the island? I think that is definitely just sort of pot, spot on what you just said there. I think it is like the college part of town. Or yeah. maybe the second bay could be that. But um, I think it's like just young, drunk pirates stumbling all about with a lot of, uh, a lot of like uh, team spirit for the, the boats that they follow. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, you're never going to stop. The old Timberbeard. And then they look over and Timberbeard's like playing, you know, Johnny Cash or something like that. But mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's like a it's like a sort of a grassroots sort of country style town. So you're going to have stables and you're going to have farm land and you're going to have like, um, you know, uh, maybe the school too. I don't What do you think? Like a bard school, school of rock? Well, I guess let me ask this. Uh, since this island is so musical... Um, and Kyle, you might be able to, you know, add more to this. What types mm-hmm. of music, if you had to pick one or two, are in your head when you're walking through this, uh, this, you know, tier one bay? Yeah, uh, I, I'm definitely picturing, yeah, folksy kind of music, uh, a little bit of country, maybe a little bit of bluegrass. Okay. Uh, you're getting more of that, more of that down home kind of music. Um, so, and of course, you know, that you could blend that in with the, uh, with your typical sea shanty style. Like, you know, mm-hmm. if you could take, uh, Assassin's Creed black flag music and, uh, just make it sound more country. All I right. I think that would, uh, I think that might do it. I agree. I, so I love that. Maybe even is this bay, I, I like the idea of this bay, not even necessarily being a full bay. It's like mm-hmm. a kind of a bay, but there's a lot of wood planks, sunken ships. They almost make their own bay. Um, right so one half that arcs out is like just all dilapidated ships yep yep and they kind oh, of make cool their looking. own little like garbage tier almost <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you mean silver and overwatch oh i'm just kidding exactly exactly no <laughs> uh, but uh, but i think also too uh, a cool npc that they could meet there is maybe so one thing i think that the garbage tier could allow them to do is to meet some characters who they could recruit to bring along through this tier hopping, you know, shenanigans. Yeah. Like this maybe, like maybe, yeah, maybe like a shipwright who the way he builds his ships aren't, it isn't traditional uh, or it seems right. very crazy. Um, but because of that, people are like, they shun him, but your players could be like, you know what? I like this guy's style. Yeah. Yeah. What if this, uh, what if this shipwright used to be, you know, rather renowned and then started some odd practices after a little while? Maybe, maybe this shipwright's a warlock. 
and they made a deal to uh, to find new ways of con- making ships. And so they have all these crazy out there ideas that people are like, no, you're going a little bit off the deep end. But maybe our players will be like, I see, I see the magic in your madness, dude. I yeah. almost like it. Like he has these like uh, Renaissance or like Da Vinci style. Wait, wait, yes. it wasn't Da Vinci. Was it Da Vinci? Yeah, Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. yeah You're thinking has, of like the flying machine and everything? Exactly. He just has all of these plans that everyone's like, first off, how did you think of these? Second off, there's no way, way these are going to work. And he's like, you just got to trust me. I I just right. know that these are going to work. And everyone's like, nah, get out of here, old man. You're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I love that. What if, what if the base of the ship itself is incorporating a lot of those crazy ideas, like maybe the base of the ship or the hole, the hole. I, I don't know how you can say hole. the hole, the hole, yeah, um, the hole, the um, is, is made from like a giant base, um, an actual base, you know, like the instrument itself. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. And, but, but maybe he's like, I, I just don't know sales very well or something like that. And then if mm-hmm. you move into tier two, there's like another guy that's sort of been cast aside, uh, for doing all this kind of stuff. And then his sales, uh, are essentially musical script. Um, oh yeah which I, mm. i'm just thinking i think that from sounds looks sweet perspective it looks awesome yeah. but so i haven't and then and of, maybe ahead. you bring the first ship right with you to the second one they team exactly. up exactly yeah exactly mm. dude and it's this collection of ideas mm-hmm. i love the idea too of um and i don't know if this would even work but it's D, so it doesn't have to work question <laughs> right mark. um of there being this huge like bass string that is either on or strung through the mast and it's like this huge thing to go down into the ship and to like have enough muscle to pull the space string out to like pluck it. But mm. it's this like intense, like boat shaking note. Um, yeah. I don't know. The I think that could be cool. Yeah, right. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Brown the brown note. note. The, the entire brown note. other, <laughs> the entire other boat just poops their pants. Just <laughs> badly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And I mean, I, I don't know. My, my mind always goes to thinking like, well, how do, how do you justify, you know, that like pulling a bass string and then that, you know, makes a, makes a mechanism work to where the ship moves. And it's like, well, you know, that, that stuff like the vibrations feed through, th- feed through different ports down in the hull and they wind up emitting out into the water and that pushes the ship. Dude. You know? Oh my gosh. That's uh, a whole another thing I didn't think about is during this acoustic, you know, rock, not even acoustic, but during this rock battle or during this boat battle, what what's happened to the water around these ships? Like is maybe part of even what you're doing is you're sending stuff through the water that affects like their ability to stay afloat. That could be possible. That could yeah. be sick. You know, these are, we're getting, we're getting into combat mechanics of the boat and what you can do. Yeah. That's awesome. Man, we are jumping a lot. Y'all want to jump into tier two before we get off on the combat tangents as well? Yeah. Man, yeah, yeah. I'm not two. joking. This episode could legitimately go for like two hours because I think we have that many ideas. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. It's one of those. Um, yeah. Okay, so tier two. So, Kyle, once again, Mr. Bombarded, Mr. In a Band, mm-hmm. Mr. Musical, what do you what do you hear as you walk through uh, the tier two of the, of the bays? Uh, tier two, um, I imagine it at kind of your, you know, your middle class kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're getting your typical, you know, uh, classic rock genre of music and, uh, you know, anything from like indie to, you know, punk and, you know, just every, a little bit of everything. It's kind of a, kind of like the melting pot of whatnot. You get influences maybe from the higher tier, which, you know, I'm thinking about a little bit more fancy kind of people and I don't mean to jump ahead again, but Mm -hmm. you know, there are probably, I want to say like the higher tier would be music snobs, which, you know, yeah, yeah, everyone has their place. So I'm, I'm snobby with some music, but you know, it's to each their own at the end of the day. Exactly. But, um, but yeah, no, you get this like hodgepodge of different different genres of music, and it's kind of like a melting pot of music. But but the overall the overall influence of the area would definitely be that like classic vi- classic rock kind of vibe. I like that. Yeah. I also like too that there is more there is more variety when you get to the second tier because that way your players go from a very like everything's the same, everything's very folksy, bluegrassy, very black flaggy. Um, and then yeah. they, they go to the next tier and it's just like this island comes even more alive. There's all these different influences and musical tastes. Um, and it's still centered mm-hmm. around rock, but that breaks out into so many ways that they're just kind of like, whoa, holy crap. This island just came alive. Can right. we have a hip hop bo- boat? Is there like a chance we can have a hip hop? Yeah. Boat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was hoping I to have like those... a cliche pop band as well. 
<laughs> they, you could have. I mean, you know, you could have the boy band, dude, too, of course. Dude, the the thirty person Korean boy band boat. Oh, yeah. I just I just want to see like a a hip hop boat and like the guy holds up a megaphone and he's all, and I was on the sea. I used to read Pirate Magazine or something. Like that. <laughs> they're, just like, they're just like, oh God, he's doing it. He's doing it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that sounds sweet. Okay, so what characters do we want our players to interact with here and potentially, you know, bring alongside on their quest to the top of the charts? Mm. I, I think this is where we would the sea uh, charts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is where we could introduce the uh, the person who does the the main betting over this entire uh, operation. Ooh. Somebody, the bookie for this operation, and of course, the, you know, they they schmooze and they go in and they they meet the captains and the and the crew and they rub elbows like that. So they have all the intricate details that you mm-hmm. might need to feed your feed your PCs to you know move the plot a little bit along. Like you know, this is maybe the first time they hear about. Oh yeah, this one bard literally left off, left a stink with this one captain, and it's kind of caused like a rift amongst the community a little bit. And mm-hmm. so that gives you your your NPC that you could uh, introduce for plot. Like you, um, you kind of can fish out and find this better bard, maybe recruit them or uh, yep. sign up with another ship who wants to take him out. It kind of gives you that ability to choose which way to go with that. I like that. Yeah. Maybe um, there's a draft. If there's a free agent bard, wouldn't you have a draft? Oh, my gosh. I'm taking my talents to uh, my. Limp Willie's <laughs> Limp Willie's crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh-huh. I'm going to be proud but, to be able to play for uh, Limp Willie on his boat and um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> So, okay, so with that too, what, um, okay, so I love the idea of this bookie because maybe if you either straight up pay enough or you do something to help him out, maybe he can also give you, um, you know, like going back to the punch out idea, I think Cam threw out, maybe he gives you like a special move or a special like maneuver that one of the ships you're facing is going to do so you can kind of be prepared yeah. for it. Um, Ooh. Like maybe yep. uh, there's like a because devil he went knows, down. he knows yeah. so much about the other ships, right? Yes. Yeah. So maybe this one ship just goes off into this like power ballad, um, and what that does is it throws your ship into like a maelstrom or a whirlpool, or just the waves start yeah. going crazy. But if you know to be prepared for that, you can bring you know anchors, or you can walk your crew through what to do during those waves, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be able to prep your ship for counterbalance and balancing and whatnot, or something like that. Yep. Or did you guys ever watch Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the idea too of this idea of when um, when the sex bombs are playing in that concert and it's like a the concert's facing head to head. Oh yeah, gosh. with the DJ twins, right? With the DJ yeah. twins, and there's those like giant animals that are fighting as well. That's even another thing you could tr- you yeah. could incorporate into this is like as your boats are fighting, there's also this like physical manifestation of your music that's fighting above you as well. Yeah. This no, that'd be awesome, be camp- too. This kind of needs to be a campaign book, guys. And just- yeah, right? I know. This is so much more like than a one setting, shot. basically. But yeah, hey, pretty I- much just make a setting. Dude. Because it's it's awesome. It's awesome, and I'm loving it. Oh, what if one of the ships... Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love it, Rich. I love it, Rich. I love it, dude, man. You're so excited. I it makes like, me happy, bro. Oh, I am. I think one of the things, too, maybe there's like a, one of the ships... Maybe it's like a smaller ship, or maybe it's like a not as impressive of a ship. But going back to this idea of a warlock, maybe the mm-hmm. music they play is more spooky. It's more like heavy. It has like a very like very guttural overtones to a very heavy metal. And maybe yeah. they maybe they summon something out of the water. Um, Ooh! So it's almost like their ship isn't very difficult to deal with, but this thing that they summon this 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 huge sea monster is. Yeah, right a, or like a, shoot what if a ship could open up a, a rift to the uh water plane and summon something from there oh yeah. that would be sick oh man that, that, that be... is, that's that's next tier that's yes. next tier that's next tier for <laughs> yes. sure yeah that's that, that's getting into the crazy stuff and i just the... picture dave Grohl coming out of like uh the ground in tenacious d and he's all yes. i'm the devil <laughs> and I'm I'm the <laughs> Boom, boom. Oh, we can't. We, yeah, yeah, can't oh, do too much. Don't of that. get us caught. Yeah, please don't get us struck. Um, but maybe what? What if that is the final tier? What if it's not that? You know, maybe all of these boats do something different to fight. That's more next level. But maybe the final tier is where you start having something that you summon with your music, or something that mm-hmm. you create with your music that then fights these other boats. 
Yes. Uh, we have Limp Willie's boat, sponsored by Fellas Lot. You'll see Fellas Lot <laughs> later. Dude, oh my gosh. I yes, we need that though. I want Limp Willie to go all the way. Like Yeah. And not just because that itself sounds great. That's the slo- <laughs> that's the slogan. <laughs> that's the slogan for the sponsor. <laughs> Limp Willie, he wants to go all he the way. He wants to go all the way. <laughs> um, but so okay, so uh, by the by the end, you uh, your players decide to to incorporate a blue um, blue like mm-hmm. uh, torpedo that they shoot directly at Limp Willie's ship, <laughs> and it's never been stronger. <laughs> it's, it's been like, strong for four it. hours. He's doing it. He's rocking on for four hours now. Um, well, okay. So let me ask this: final tier. This is the the top of the charts. This is the creme de la creme. What kind of music are we picturing here? Oh, I mean, you know, you. I, I'm thinking you have like a mix of your like top top forties pop. Like, I mean, like today top forties pop and whatnot. Okay. Um, so it's like you know your your most famous pirates and captains and whatnot uh, that are like revered, and everybody's like, oh yeah, I want to be like that one. Uh, yeah. No. But um but yeah, you <laughs> No, no, you have no, that no, no, no. Yeah, we're the listening. That's all. <laughs> no, no, for sure. I well, I was thinking of a stupid joke uh with they're, they're very admiral instead of admirable and uh, that's a stupid, you know. No, nope, I yeah. love that. Trust me. You're in good company. <laughs> you're in good company. Um but but yeah, and you maybe have a little bit of that and like I said, you know, there there's there's a little bit of snobbery in that and maybe maybe uh there's actually two sectors and it's like the pop and then the people who are like, "Oh no, we need to retain the classics." And you get your yeah. more classical music kind of people. So Maybe maybe the the top tier might I know it kind of splits it into like four tiers now but everyone in the top tier like they're all like revered the same throughout the community but you still have these two warring sides yes. like you know the uh, sharks and the jets. Yep. No, I love that. I love the idea of there being that that tenseness as you like because you watch. The, I think the second tier, the first tier tier feels very much like family. They they they're fighting against each other but they know each other. Second tier, there's that there's a camaraderie they all are yeah. bringing their best and everyone's kind of like still cheering each other on but hoping they win uh but then right. you get to the top tier and it's just like like so tense like there's yeah. no one getting along you stick with your own little little click or sub genre and when you guys kind of come in everyone's like looking at your players like oh, i hate these guys they don't belong here yeah right absolutely i um i had this idea of because i think the top tier is like a person that would listen to records on uh, like an actual record and yep. tell you how much better it sounds on like guilty. Kind of yeah. <laughs> yep. No, I'm, I'm looking at I'm, my record I'm, player right now. <laughs> yeah. But like they have their ship has an arm that goes out and reaches into this, the <gasps> sea and then it just starts spinning and spinning and spinning and creating this whirlpool. And, and then all the people watching, they're like, they're like, oh man, that just sounds so like crisp and you know, sort of what the artist intended. You, know? you can hear so- the depth of the ocean in this. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just it. something else. Dude, now, I here's have- one thing. Here's okay. one thing, guys. We um, so there's an execution happening still. Well, <laughs> yep. Hey, I thought that the execution was you were helping somebody get to the top, and they would just get killed in the first round uh, or something like that. I- Maybe yeah. I don't know. Or you know, this is this is the thing is you know you if you get that one bard, the one bard that we're going to be executing, you get them on your team. Then your characters they develop a relationship with that person, and then once the execution comes around, they're invested in not having them die. Yeah. Okay, cool. So so essentially, let's say we get to the top of the to the to the heap, right, and we win the the championship, the the bard at championship. Mm-hmm. Then our our big bad. Uh, well, not even a big bad, just our scorned lover yep. comes through, and that's where we can... And, and you can meet that person throughout the, the campaign as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, okay. there will be, you know, plenty of plenty of tournaments and competitions where, you know, you go and you watch them, you know, perform against other people and whatnot, and maybe, you know, yeah, there's meet and greets, and you get to meet them, and then they wind up seeing that your team... You know, over many different encounters and whatnot, you know, they finally recognize, okay, your team's moving up. So, like, I need to stop that from happening because I know you're barred because yeah. they, they did me wrong. And no. uh, I'll be damned if I'm going to let you get close to being able to compete with me. And it's just like the Mighty Ducks where the, the team takes away the team's best player. Yes. And, yeah. Quack. 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 <laughs> Quack. <laughs> you summon a giant duck from the waters and it fights for you. 
<laughs> no, no, Rich. That's not where we're going. I'm sorry. Rich, so, nope. I'm, I'm sorry. all in on the duck idea, guys. I'm here. All right. I'm with you right now. <laughs> oh, man. But no, I great. like that idea of, of her showing up. Because if you partner with this bard from the very beginning, and maybe maybe that's how it starts. You show up, this bard's going to be executed because he's a bard without a crew. And maybe that's yeah. a thing. Is like, you can't just be a bard without a crew because that's a dangerous, like, there's no accountability there for, like, who you're right. playing for. So you show up and he says, like, hey, let me be a part of your crew. I know you don't even have a ship. You don't need a ship to be a crew. Just say just say I'm your bard, and that'll keep me from get, getting killed. Um, and then right. after that, you kind of end up going through this tournament with him. Um, because, of course, like, he says you don't need a ship, but they're like, okay, well, then we're going to sign you up to compete. If you guys get so far, we'll let you guys off the hook. Uh, if you don't make yeah. it to at least the second tier, we're going to have you all executed. But you're welcome to try to get higher than that for, like, some prize or oh. something. Makes me think of an NPC, like, uh, I believe it's Tom Nook. Uh, from yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, who, who, yeah, I'll sell you a boat, and then you're forever indentured to him. Oh, exactly. <laughs> like, don't even yeah. worry about the price. You know what? I'll just give it to you for so cheap. Don't even worry about it. And then just yeah. the rest of the time, you're like, oh, guess I live here now forever. Guess I'm yeah. the mayor. We here. need to make cool. improvements to your boat if you're going to move up in the tiers. I actually know a guy, and then you have the Tom Nook character introducing him to the first shipwright. Ooh, mm. yeah. And he's like, yeah, this guy. I've known him for a long time. He's a little wacky, but you know what? He'll give you a good. He'll give you a good price. Um, yeah. And his name. His name is Tom Hook. Tom so, Hook. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, Tom. Hook. I almost swore. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said of uh, the swear. Uh, I almost said it. That's okay. So I love. I like that though. For an execution, you're stopping the execution by almost attaching yourself to him. Um, yeah. To this bard NPC. Um, but okay, so I'm trying to think. There was something else that one of you guys had said that I thought was good, and I cut you off with the quacking. Um, <laughs> anything else you guys have been thinking of as I've been rambling? Uh, I, I I think of this is that um, I know we're doing those monthly modules, Rich. Yes. But um, we should just tell everybody that we're going to make this an entire campaign setting and uh and they can go to hell hell. we're not gonna we're not gonna give them monthly modules anymore and we're just gonna make one entire setting for an entire year so this is this is huge there is a lot to this um yeah you never go wrong with pirates no pirates is always pirates uh wwe epic Mm -hmm. uh epic rap battles of history uh oh yeah you know just you throw all these things together Epic musical numbers, summoning Cthulhu from the deep, ducks, yep. limp willies. It's got everything. <laughs> it's got everything you need for a good campaign. It truly does. Every every campaign needs at least one or two quality dig jokes. So, it's, it's true. Yep. It's true. Yeah. That survive for way too long. Like yeah. right when you think that they're dead, someone else brings it back. <sighs> yeah. But okay, so let's do this then. Um, Cam, why don't you go ahead, summarize all of what we just talked about uh, yeah a brief, a brief man <laughs> walk jesus <through>. christ <laughs> i don't um, know how i'm gonna do that and then uh, uh kyle so something that you guys might not know about bombarded is like kyle said uh, it's himself and a band that he plays with who get together and play and they write a song uh, at the end of every session, right? Or some point throughout your session. It, it, it's somewhere in the session, you know, honestly, like sometimes I plan an event where they could play a song and then other times I'm like, you just, you know, choose whenever. I try mm-hmm. to drop hints here and there and I've had, I've been ignored sometimes and it hurts, <laughs> but it's okay. It's like, now would be a great time. This character really needs someone to sing a song. Yeah. And they're like, I give that... them a, a hard nudge. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, that sucks. I hope they hope they find somebody. Anyway, see yeah. you guys. Well, Screw uh, that person. Let's go over here. So so Kyle was going to do our synopsis today, and we thought we'd ask him to put a little bit of his bombarded flair on that. Um, so Kyle, we'll give you some time to maybe think about that. And yeah. Cam, in the meantime, why don't you go ahead and summarize this session? Oh, dear God. This, um, this campaign <laughs> module of a session. Oh, my God. Um, all right, where do we start? We start ourselves on the island, uh, an island that has varying levels of 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 poverty and richness and and all those different things like that the island is surrounded by four different bays or three different bays depending on how far you want to take this and each of those bays are represented by different levels of pirate um combat 
entertainment, if you will. Um, and essentially what this town has come to the conclusion of is, is that instead of using the wind uh, around to push the sails, uh, pirates have begun using bards as their main form of transportation, and bards have become revered. And each of the different musical styles and different songs have allowed for the uh, different growth within the different ships themselves. And so you've got you start out with the the country folk listening, um, good old southerners, if you will, um, for tier one, and and they're just a, a family bunch of people that are all sort of. Uh, just wrestle together, you know, get together in the mud and the muck. And you can tell that because everything sort of pieced together and, and sort of becomes one, uh, you know, it's like a bunch of ships and a bunch of different old components that have formed this like makeshift bay uh, for them to have their good old, fa- good old fashioned uh, pirate wrestling matches. And then uh, we move up into tier two <clears throat> And this is more of the general population. Obviously, it's more of a standard uh, bay. It's it's been created by the land itself already. Uh, you'll see, you know, a few normal homes, uh, and everything sort of represented by classical rock and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of like your standard listings. And then. We move up into Tier 3, and boy, oh boy, is this the big show. This is Pirate Mania. This right here is absolutely freaking beautifully constructed bays that are are perfect for everything that they're trying to do. Um, They have the ability to adapt the water inside to leave room for a bigger crowd, and the pirate ships themselves are some of the highest paid artists in the world, and uh, the bards themselves are so revered that... Every single person swoons over their every note strum, and they're just sort of blown away at everything they could do. These guys have gotten so good that they're actually forming the water around them with their musical abilities to fight for the ships themselves in these essential battles, if you will. Um, our players have found a specific bar- bard, hard on his luck, kicked away from a ship, and has now trying to essentially make his way back into the world. Bards are not allowed to live unless, of course, they have their own ship. This is a very tough life. It's actually really kind of messed up if you think about it. But um, at the end of the day, um, our players are going to work together with this bard and try to find a way to uh, give him the ship he deserves again. And so there we go. And I didn't get to the bad guy yet, but, you know, I just feel like I'd be talking for like 20 minutes, honestly, guys. (laughs) So that's the reality behind it. Some last few things I have to... I have to maybe give us an option to quickly last minute spitball brainstorm um, Mm -hmm. is some things that ships could do to come alive with like these epic musical numbers. For instance, like maybe a ship, like the sides of it pull up, planks of it pull up out of the water to create little tiny, um, almost like, uh, like, what's it called? Uh, Like a xylophone? Like a xylophone. Or maybe like the boards pull up off the side, like, like a rib cage. And as yeah. it opens up, there's like a harp um, or some kind of stringed instrument that it allows like the bar to kind of pluck with these like mage hand type things. This epic like yes. guitar solo. This is um, so sick, dude. <laughs> dude, I even like the idea of like a mast splitting in two um, or like connecting and somehow there's something that go- goes through that. I don't know. What do you like anything that you guys see of like a quirky ship and how it can become crazy musical? Yeah, I was thinking uh, just now um, something you could do to maybe speed up the boat if you want to give yourself some speed is uh, some of the like the main mast is strung with like a violin or something. And when those are vibrated, they wind up causing the the speed to increase so that you can be a little bit more have a little bit more movement on the seas. Yep. That sounds sick. Uh, Tom Hanks. And a floor keyboard, and, uh... <laughs> dude, and launches dude, dude, volleyballs. Dude, dude. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, it's just... dude, having drums hooked up to your cannons—that could be sick. Yo, yeah. oh, dude, I love the idea of like this uh, entire ship that's just like a uh, those. Uh, I, I guess they're like Chinese drums with like. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like those right there, and they're just like hauling ass down the down the sea. Oh, that just could be rocketing. so cool. I love this. I love this. Uh, Kyle, have we given you enough time? Uh, I don't know how long it takes to craft a masterpiece. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you know, being honest, sometimes the songwriting process for Bombarded takes like two to four hours. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to uh, to hold y'all to that. So, um, I, I I'm willing to try something here. Okay. And uh, you know, it may or may not work. 
but and I tried to write down some things while you were going over the synopsis, and I don't know, uh, you know, it's it's always up in the air. Exactly. You know what? <laughs> you know we're called filling in the gaps, so we're okay if there's some gaps left. It doesn't. Yeah, have you to gotta be have pretty. some gaps to fill in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Let's see here. So where where should we start off in this synopsis? I mean, you know, like arriving in the bay and then finding the bard, then getting your boat and working your way up and uh, achieving victory. That's sweet, yeah. sweet victory. A sweet, sweet victory. Right on. So uh, let's uh, – I'm just going to do something in the key of C. I'm probably going to keep it around like – uh, for anybody, any mu- musicians and whatnot that are listening, I'm probably going to m- noodle around with C major, E minor, F major, and G major. Um, so those are, I think that'll work out pretty well. Those are my go-tos when I'm kind of just messing around. Okay. Um, so excited. Let's see. Uh, I'm feeling like, you know, of course, a lot of shanties kind of have some swing to it. So mm-hmm. maybe a 6-8. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just see what happens. You All know right. what? You, I think you should probably go with a 7-8. Um. No, no, no. I'm good. I appreciate it. I, I would. <laughs> that would require a good amount of time. <laughs> I don't even know. But what I, I appreciate is. your enthusiasm. I only know a little bit about music, but I know that seven eights are torture. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're fun to learn and play for sure. But is it a thing? Uh, is that a thing that I actually did? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of the Led Zeppelin song. Uh, bam, 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 bam. That's that's oh, insane. Yeah. I don't know if that's right, but but yeah, absolutely. No, we actually did a did an episode in the last. I think it was in the early twenties where we talked about complex meter, where you can have songs in five five eight and you know five four, and it's just they're really complex meters. And typically, what you do for those is you'll group them into like groups of three, two, and two, or three and two or two and three it's just it all depends on how you group the the emphasis of the measure okay so, and for those of you out there who thought D math was hard uh you know what take it back See, there is harder it, math out there it's it you know it, it's fun it's fun once you get into it but it is it, it they call it complex meter for a reason mm-hmm. oh yeah dude but uh but yeah what part what part are you going to isolate and uh tell a story about um, or are you going to do the whole thing like you did right there? Sort of like a, a bard tale of sorts. Uh, yeah, I, I, let me, I think I'll try to go for a bard tale. Maybe maybe it'll be a bard telling of of the adventure of the adventurers. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. All right. So let me, let me see. Y'all going to hear that all right, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Now listen of my tale Of some bards that had to set sail They found a bard like me About to be hung from a tree We set sail that day And found our way to play Working uh, up the ranks and battling other shit tanks. I guess that's what we would call those things. And let me tell you the story it brings. I feel like I'm getting into a Bob Dylan thing. <laughs> oh, you definitely are getting into a Bob Dylan thing. <laughs> well, the bard's got a boat from this crazy old kook. His name was Tom Hook. And he told him about this weird shipwright who was making crazy ass <laughs> ships <laughs> deep into the night. They made their way into the second tier. And they knew they didn't have anything to fear. Until the bard told them of a captain that he steered awry. Oh, I love this. I think I'm almost at the end of my tale. And I might just have to go ahead and set sail Without a hindrance or fail You'll play your own adventure And sing your own tale I don't know (laughs) So That was amazing So beautiful Um, It it definitely was a Bob Dylan thing I'm I yeah. I don't listen to many bands, but I listen to a lot of Bob Dylan And as soon as you said that, I just kind of kept hearing him sing that Yeah I mean, I, I like to do uh, 
do a thing called Bob Dylan covers, mm. and it's Dude. basically Bob Dylan covering any song. Yes. <laughs> so, oh I mean, my yeah, gosh! I'm like, glad I'm not the only one who does. Let me that. tell you about these bods on C and oh all the gosh. things that they did with me. Well, they saved my life, Dude. and I was at the knife, and you know that we had to go through that with strife. I am so I glad <laughs> I'm not the only person who does that. Like there was a long, Dude, it's fun. there was a long string of time where I would just like listen to the radio and just be like, I wonder how Bob Dylan would sing this. I think it started when I heard on YouTube someone posted uh, "Friday" by Bob Dylan, that Rebecca <laughs> Black song. Oh, and it was so yes. good. Friday, Friday, Friday. <laughs> gonna get down on Friday. Party, party, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so good. I guess I guess the balance in this world is the fact that I don't actually do that. So because if we had a bunch of people doing Bob Dylan covers, oh, uh, that'd be, be anarchy. That so. might be a dangerous <laughs> thing. But dude, Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we yeah, really appreciate no you coming problem out. At all. It was a blast. Uh, Kyle, this was a blast. Yeah. Where can people find you? Where can people listen to Bombarded? Uh, if you want to listen to Bombarded and hear better songs than what I just did, uh, you could go to any of your podcatchers and search for Bombarded, and we'll pop up there. If you're looking on social media, search at Bombarded Cast. We have our website, which is bombardedcast.com. Uh, if you want to hear, we've actually released, we're up to like episode 31, I think, at this point, and we've released, uh, depending on when this podcast comes out, but we've released the uh, first two volumes, which, you know, every 10 episodes, we're releasing a volume of music written written by the band Chaos Sauce in the podcast That's Bombarded. Beautiful. But you can find that at bandcamp.com forward slash bombarded cast. Um, and man, I know I'm probably saying some of these wrong, but you know, Goodrich isn't here to uh, kind of be like, hey, you said that, you know, that's not the URL, right? But you know, <laughs> you search Bombarded, it. you might find us on there. And uh, yeah, any social media, search hashtag Bardcast to see what people are saying. Um, and uh, yeah, drop us a line. Let us know if you uh, dig the tunes. Cool. Awesome. Cam, any announcements you have for any of our people where they can find us if this is their first time listening? Uh, you can find us at Filling in the Gaps um, on our Reddit. Um, you can find us on our Twitter at FitGDND, F I T G D N D. Um, we don't have a website. So thanks for making me feel yeah. small. Rubbing that in. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Man, you, no, no, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, like the, the rest of the team of Bombarded, like as the DM, it, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but, uh, man, I got to give props to the rest of my crew because without them, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be happening the way it is. So, right. uh, you know, props to Allie, props to Goodrich and props to Spurrier. They all, they all put in a huge amount of work into it. And, uh, it's weird being a DM that has people putting in the same amount of work into something that you are. So I'm that's, proud that's, to get to play with awesome. them and I appreciate everything they do. Aww. That's awesome. Yeah, honestly, guys, just go listen to them. They're a so they're, they're so much fun. It really is. It just a, every single episode, I'm always just sort of like waiting to figure out what's about to happen next. I know there are tons of actual plays out there. I mean, tons of them. Uh, this is one I definitely think you should listen to. Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody does it like they do. Nope. So they've uh, got their own special niche and it. they do it well. Yeah. Thank you very much. I does that sound familiar? So. Does that sound familiar, listeners out there at all? Huh? Do a, a special niche in doing it well because we're the best storytellers that's ever been created. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> represent y'all. Yeah. So we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Filling the Gaps. Once again, we may we might not be an actual play podcast, but we hope that we can brainstorm and laugh and talk about goofy ducks fighting Cthulhu in the middle of a rock battle held by two pirate ships, so that you can think of some idea, so that you can actually play with your friends your next game night. We hope you guys got something good out of this session, and we'll be seeing you guys on the next one.